Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. A church at home, we're dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. That means restoring the truth of God, the Word of God, the love of God, the faith of Jesus Christ, so that we get into the Scriptures and we prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. And we repent of our sins. We repent of the practices that we have been involved in. We come to the true understanding of what God wants us to do in worshiping and serving and loving Him. One thing we need to remember is this. God is a God of truth. God cannot lie. It's impossible for Him to lie. His Word is holy. It is true. It tells us what we should do. The Bible is God's message to each one of us individually. That's why you have a Bible in your house. Now, maybe you can't understand all of the doctrines, but all of the basic things that we are covering here at Church at Home, you can begin to find in almost any Bible that you may have. But if you desire to go beyond that, then go to our other website, cbcg.org, and download the sermons there. And if you really want to get into the Word of God the way that you should, then order for yourself the Holy Bible in its original order from our website, Restoring the Original Bible. That's what we're doing. We have no axe to grind. We have no politics that we are doing. We have no board of directors that is going to dictate and force us to do against the will of God. And that happens in so many churches. See, we love God. We love Jesus Christ. We love the people that God is dealing with. We love the world, even as Jesus said we ought to. And we preach and teach the Word of God. So if there's some things that you hear me preach and say and teach, and that kind of strikes to the heart of things that you've been involved in, well, please understand that if you set those things aside, if you put them away and repent of them, you can go ahead and learn of God's way. How can you expect to, to serve the God of truth with lies? It'll never happen. God says he's seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And there has been so many counterfeits out there, so many false Christianities out there, and I cannot tell you uh, plain enough or loud enough or clear enough that you can't worship and serve God with pagan lies or myths or forms of worship of God that you find in the religions of this world has to be from the heart, has to be between you and God the Father, and His Word back to you. Now, concerning Halloween, we've seen where that comes from, and you need, you need this book that I've been telling you about over and over again, and I want you to order it. This book is the quintessential in-depth study book so you can understand where the occult holidays come from, and you are going to be amazed how this whole world is saturated in the occult because Satan the devil has deceived the whole world. And then to pull back all of the blindness and the screens and the veils that keep you from understanding the Word of God and understand about His holy days, understand about the Sabbath, understand about the Passover, understand about the Feast of God, which then teach you what He's doing, teach you how you can relate to God, not the way that the world does, because here's how the world does it. Isaiah 8 and verse 19. And when they say to you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and to wizards that peep and mutter, but should not a people seek unto their God? Should not the dead be sought on behalf of the living? That's the whole heart and core of Halloween. That's not of God. That's of Satan the devil. And you're going to be surprised what we're going to cover today. God says the way out of it is very clear. Let's come down here to verse 20. To the law, law of God, to the testimony, the New Testament, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. 
And remember, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the light of the world. God says we're not to be involved in witchcraft and seeking familiar spirits and seeking after Satan the devil, which is exactly what happens here because people reject the word of God. Now, during Paul's ministry at Ephesus, you read about it in the book of Acts. He came there, and there was this great goddess Diana in the temple, and they were serving Satan the devil. They were serving the occult. And conversions were so great and so widespread that they were bringing their occult books and their occult idols and statues of the goddess uh, Diana and burning them. And it was really quite a thing that all the idol makers, they got together, the union of, you know, they had unions back there then, you know, the idol makers and the silver makers and so forth. And they got together and said, look, this apostle Paul, he's causing a depression. We're, we're losing our, we're losing our business. And the whole thing of worshiping Diana is coming out of style. And look, the temple is nearly vacant. So they started a riot, and they wanted to kill Paul, and they just barely got him out of there with, without him being killed. They even went and had a big meeting in the Colosseum, and they were shouting, Great is the God of Sion, great is the God of Sion. Who's a lie? There's no goddess Diana. But you see, when people turn from the wizards, turn from the demon spirits, turn from idolatry, you're going to meet resistance. Now, Paul wrote of this here in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, in writing back to them after he had, he had left after that encounter, that they're not to go back to that, and they're to remember that they came out of it. Verse 17, Ephesians 4, So then I declare and testify this in the Lord, that you are no longer to walk, even as the rest of the Gentiles are walking in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their hearts. They left God following the idols. That's what they were doing before. They repented. The question is, what are you going to do? The question is, will you repent? And repentance means to turn and go the other way. Will you do that? Will you turn from the way of the world and Satan the devil and turn to God's way and live his way? That's why you need this book cult holidays or God's holy days, which so you can understand what you need to do. You can understand what is wrong. You can understand what is right. You can understand what is a lie. You can understand what is the truth. You can understand what the words of God really are, because there's also something that will help give you more understanding than anything else other than reading, which is obey God. As you keep the commandments of God, you have understanding. So this is what he's saying. Don't go back that way and do that, because look at what happened to them. Verse 19, they've cast off all feelings and have given themselves up to licentiousness to work every uncleanness with insatiable desire. And we're going to see how that is done today. But what I want to do again I want to play for you this one-minute clip concerning Halloween. And I want you to ask yourself, is it fair to our children to indoctrinate them in Satanism and witchcraft and the darkness and the depths of Satan the devil? Is that what we should do? So you watch this and think about it. It bears repeating.
let's understand that Halloween is from darkness. And the power of darkness is ruled over by Satan, the devil. Should we take our children and do these things? Think about it. Now, let me talk to you about San Francisco, California, which is just 100 miles north of where we are in doing this video cast. There is no other city like it. There's nothing equal to it at all. And it's always promoted. Halloween is promoted as a peaceful, happy event. But it's the biggest impromptu bash of its kind, bringing out more than a quarter million revelers to the Castro Market Street neighborhood, the very heart and core of the homosexual community. And there was a visitor who went to that celebration several years ago, and he said that it was unlike Halloween in the United Kingdom from where he had come from. So he said this, so it was by luck that I found myself in San Francisco, which happens to be the host of the biggest Halloween celebration in the world with 300,000 people taking to the Castro area in San Francisco, which otherwise is the epicenter of the gay culture in San Francisco. The party, however, soon turned to violence. Multiple arrests were made as seven people were stabbed and police in riot gear had to step in. A friend I was with was attacked by several vicious men. Why? What goes on that night of celebration of Satan, the devil, and the demons? Why is it such a high holy night for the gay community? Now, here's some quotes from a magazine. Men for men. Like I said in in the last segment, if you want to know what your enemy does, read their books. So here's a quote. This Halloween was once thought just to be for the kiddies and fun. However, in an article about Halloween entitled Pagan Ritual to Party Night, Nicholas Roger writes, Halloween at the end of the millennium has become a major party night for adults, arguably the most important after New Year's Eve. Hmm. They've taken Halloween, and it now has become a gay community celebration and an outing for all of the new homosexuals to come out. Yes, indeed. Rogers tells us, the gay community has most flamboyantly exploited Halloween's potential as a transgressive festival, celebrating sin, celebrating getting away from God, celebrating licentious sex, celebrating evil and Satanism and dedication to it. Yes as one that operates outside on the margins of orthodox time, space, and hierarchy. Indeed, it is the gay community that has been arguably most responsible for Halloween's adult rejuvenization. Isn't that something? William Stewart writes about Halloween, and it's called the Gay Festival Par Excellence and was used before Gay Pride Days and Coming Out Days, the Southern Decadence, Wigstock, Bear Busts, Circuit Parties, Leather Runs, Nudist Gatherings, Women's Musical Festivals. Long before there was Disney, Halloween was and is the original Gay Day. From the magazine, Men, or men. Halloween is a special holiday, and what they call the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transsexual people, who in many societies serve as priests, witches, shamans, healers, intermediaries between the mortal and spirit world. Remember where we started? By going to the spirits that mutter and peep. Go to the witches, have them cast a spell, let them tell you your fortune. And they admit this all comes from Sanhain. It admits that it all comes from demonism. 
And that's why you need this book, A Cold Holidays or God's Holy Days, which, because it will give you all of the historical background of Halloween, of Christmas, of Easter, of New Year's, of Groundhog's Day. You'll be shocked. You know what you're going to have to admit if you're immersed in all of those things? You may have thought yourself that you were a Christian, but in reality, you're a fully baptized pagan, no more Christian than a Halloween costume. And Grand puts it this way, while others dressed up in fantastic costumes to impersonate and confuse wandering spirits, that's what they did in ages past. Impersonating a spirit is the only safe way to travel outdoors on Halloween. And what could better imitate spirits than gay people whose traditional priestly roles required just such an intercourse with the spirit world? And they say that at that time of the year, the veil and the curtain between the demonic spirit world and human beings is the thinnest, and that you can break through that barrier and seek the God of this world. Satan the devil. Immerse yourself in full deception. Immerse yourself in lies and deceit and sin. Continuing, the qualities of impersonation and the dangerous business of crossing over from one world to another help explain why Halloween is the most significant gay holiday. Halloween's appeal to the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender communities goes beyond the holiday's historical and spiritual connotations. I believe it has a lot to do with our role as outsiders in society, our propensity for cross-dressing and gender blending, and our love for the unusual and fantastic, our ability to find humor in the absurdities and misfortunes of life, our fascination with festive costumes, and the world of make-believe, and our special capacity to have fun, while others might treat Halloween as a kid's day. Lesbian, by gay trans people observe and cherish it, as a day in which they can do away with the dull, ordinary, dumb reality and be our fun, exotic, erotic selves. God says, learn not the way of the heathen. Now, let's look at what the Apostle Paul says in Galatians, the fifth chapter. Will you continue in Halloween? Will you buy candy and be pressured by all the people around. So when the doorbell rings and the little kitties are there and they say, trick or treat, you give them candy. Oh, but it's innocent. Really, is it? What does it lead to? Look at what I just read and described to you. Who upholds and exalts and loves this day. It is their quintessential holiday of the whole world the celebration of Satan and his demons, the celebration of the fall of Satan the devil and the angels that followed him. Galatians 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Now notice, every single one of these things are involved in one degree or another in Halloween. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, licentiousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, strifes, jealousies, indignations, contentions, divisions, sex, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such things as these concerning which I am telling you, the apostle Paul is saying, beforehand, even as I have also said in the past, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we are dealing with a religious system in this world that is pretending to be Christian, that is calling itself the religion of God on the earth. 
and is promoting all of these wicked holidays of the world, and the world has embraced them as wonderful and fun and good and fine. It's something we should do. Should you? Do you want to worship God in spirit and in truth? What is your life? What are you going to do with your life? What do you want out of your life? Do you really want God? How much are you willing to give up to find God, to find the true Jesus, to find the God of the Bible and the true resurrected Jesus Christ, who will then forgive your sins through his sacrifice, and God will restore you to him. God will restore you to himself. And he will give you the Holy Spirit upon repentance and baptism so that you can overcome the sin that you have been involved in. And that with his spirit and studying of his word and the activation of it in your mind, there will be the washing of the water of the word to cleanse your mind, to cleanse your thoughts, to cleanse you through Christ and through the word of God, that you can become a true Christian, that you can await the kingdom of God, that you can be part of the first resurrection when Jesus returns. Is that what you want in your life? Now you need to count the cost and see what you have to forsake. You need to understand what is in the Bible, and you can begin to do that by getting this book, Occult Holidays or God's Holy Days, which one leads to death, the other leads to life. As Jesus said, choose life that you may live. Follow me, for my burden is light and my yoke is easy. And cast your cares upon me, because I love you and care for you. But you have to come to God his way. And that's what church at home is all about. Because you're not going to hear things like this from any of the churches of this world. You need the truth. This world is going down, down, down because it has rejected God. And God's judgment is actively being executed upon us now as a, as a nation and as, as a people who profess to know God. But we have turned it into a cauldron of pagan cesspool of sin, Satanism, and abominations. God can forgive those sins. You can come to Christ and have the slate wiped clean, but you have to have the resolve that you're going to go forward in truth and in righteousness, in understanding, and in love to seek God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and being. And let your life be changed through Christ. Let your life be converted with Christ in you. Let the word of God dwell in you richly, so you know right from wrong, good from evil, so that you understand how to worship God in spirit and in truth. That's what church at home is all about. Now, there are many people who are having church at home, and there will come a time when you will desire to meet those who believe what we are teaching here, and that day will be available. But take this time to be grounded in the Word of God, grounded in the things of God, so that you know who God is, where God is, and how to get your life squared around. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home, and be sure and use cbcg.org for the many, many sermons that we have to help you, to teach you, to encourage you, to show you the way that is right, to help lead you to God, and so that you can fulfill your destiny to become a very son or daughter of God. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. And this is Fred Coulter saying, until next time, so long, everyone. <laughs>